Mr. Proctor. Hello, Mr. Versey. So we're, we're finally doing it then, pal. We are, yeah. Yeah. You said you wanted to interview me and like Big Z and a few others, but um, when you phoned, I wanted to ask you some questions because you're a bit of a Felix Doe legend. Well, people say that, but I don't like to... Well, I do. I was going to say, I don't like to blow my own trumpet, but people would know that I'm lying. <laughs> well, you are getting a podcast together, so you must yeah, love it. Yeah. And I'm a bit like that too. Yeah, and, and I, I think it's something that we've touched on for years and years and years, because just going to give people a little bit of history, we were doing things together before the podcasts a long way, way ago when we both dabbled in websites. Yes, that's right. You were kind of getting started with WordPress, weren't you? Yeah. And, and I gave you a few uh, pointers. Even, even a bit of HTML, you came, you came around mine and... Yeah. So I think it was, bef- I think it was still last century. <laughs> Possibly that long ago, pal. Yeah. But here we are. We're going yeah. to we'll have, have a little go at this. We're just going to sit down together and just waffle. Yeah, okay. We'll talk about Felix Stowe. Yeah, Felix Stowe. The, the people. people in it, definitely. Yeah, the good things. Yep, the, the history, yep. the past, the past is the history, the, the present and the future. I think when you say history, you don't mean the flying boats down the dock, do you? <laughs> no, no, I don't. I mean, uh, More no. the culture side of it. Yeah. yeah Excellent. So some of the places we used to go that no longer exist. The Felix? Yeah, oh, the Felix, yeah. If, you know, all them pubs that are long even, even the things like... Um, the skateboard park has to have a mention. Yeah. Guess what? I never went there. I never went there. Um, I went to the school, uh, school, the skating rink. Did you? Where Lidl's is now. Oh, I've been to the skating rink once. I think my yeah. mum and dad, or my mum brought me down as a kid. Yeah, my uh, my older sister used to go on a Sunday evening and take me down. We'd listen to the charts and then walk down the, walk down the, the pram walk or the skating rink hill, whatever it's called. I do class myself as Felix Doe through and through, but I didn't move to Trimley until I was eight years old. Yeah? Yeah. I lived opposite school. Always late for school still. And then, um, obviously, 18, you move away and start living with your mates and stuff. After I lived in a van for a little while and went back to that. But, uh, yeah, I do love Felix, though, especially the seafront. I want to see the seafront do really well. Yeah, and, and over the years, now, you all know, I do a lot of cycling and go all over Felix, though, and beyond on my bike. And um, actually, come, come riding around and seeing the development of the town and, yeah. and how it's improving. And... Um, it's only going to get better. What are they doing with that Le Plage building then, down the seafront? What's that going to be? That was... Uh, it's the old North Sea Hotel, yeah? That's it, yes. There's, um, it's accommodation up the top, right. and down the bottom was going to be um, retail units. Uh, it's the wrong place for retail. But for the it? last two years, they've not sold any retail units. They're, they're, going, they're going to develop them for yeah. um, accommodation. Okay. Which is the right thing to do, because you don't want empty... No. Units. Yeah. And I saw um, this week in the paper, there's one million development somewhere else as well on the seafront. Yeah, just across the road from there, opposite the Felsto, where they had that track and trail thing, that fitness thing, which have now moved to right. um, Langer Park. They're doing some sort of development there, and it's going to be um, like little sort of more permanent beach hut type things okay. and chalet type things. Right. Which, again, would bring people to the town, spend more money. I mean, with that and the pier, yeah. we're nailed it, haven't we? Yeah. If we can do something with the, the spa, I mean, do people still go there? I, I certainly still use the place. Good on you. And um, the, the Mannings brothers have done, done wonders with Beach Street. Yeah, I've been to Beach Street on a couple of lunch breaks. I went to like the PR opening event as well for it, and it's lovely. See, now, I've only been there once, and it was in the very early days... So I haven't seen it in its full operational use at the moment. Yeah. I'll go back. No problem, I'll go back down there. Um, and the the old um, market place where the Cavendish was, that's, um, that's up for redevelopment, so that's going to be um, even better. So all the way along from... Five the, years, ten years, we'll be there. Yeah, and that, um, the, the, new, the people from Dedham who own the boathouse at Dedham, their new restaurant... On the corner that where old Herne Stern used to be yep. is due to open very soon, hopefully. And we're recording this on the 2nd of November, so hopefully by the time we do our next podcast, we might have some news on its opening. Excellent. Do you reckon we'll get a free dinner in there if we go well, and review? I'm trying to maybe wangle something like that, because um, 
Whilst I love my town and I do everything for free, if someone wants to give me a free dinner party, <laughs> I'll have one. I must confess, I had uh, jumbo sausage and chips from the Regal on the way down here. Yeah. Well, that's a treat, because I don't live in Phoenix anymore, yeah. do I? So. Um, again, we'll, we'll, we might have to do a whole episode on chip food. Shops at chop, uh, food <laughs> and chip shops in Phoenix. <laughs> do a chip um, shop crawl. Yeah, you, you get on the old Facebook and, and people saying, name a, name a chip shop, a good oh. chip shop in Phoenixstone. And it's easier to say name a bad one, because uh, there isn't. Okay. I mean, they're, they're great, and before I went on my health kick, I'd probably sample chips from every single chip shop in town, <laughs> and, and I've no doubt I will do again, but, you know. I've actually got to the Fludges uh, next week for an evening. Yeah? Yeah, that'd be nice, but I think it's quite expensive, isn't it? Um, I think it's, it's, it's what it is. It's, um, yes, it probably is expensive if you compare it to the food in the Grosvenor. <laughs> That's a different level. But yeah, I mean, I'm not knocking anything. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Like, I'll go to Grosvenor and I'll eat food when you're drinking. Yeah. But there's pub grub and there's gastro pub grub. And I think that's where... Well, I think we've gone a bit highbrow version. We have, haven't we? You know, I like this. Six minutes in and we're, um, we, we, we're using posh words. <laughs> we've upped the game a little. <laughs> Let's bring it back down. Two yeah. littles. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, do you know... I really love the fact that Beach Street is shipping containers and it's in Felixstowe. It, it just suits it so well. It, it's what Felixstowe is really, isn't it? it, it it's, well, it's not what it is. It, we're not defined by the shipping containers that come through, but without them, we wouldn't be as thriving, I think. No, and I think there's a lot more to come because Freeport. We've got Freeport status coming to the area. Yes. It isn't just Felixstowe. It extends... 23 kilometres, I think, from the centre. Now, can you do me a favour and explain to our listeners what Freeport is? Because when it was announced that we were getting to Freeport, many people on Facebook thought we were getting a shopping centre like Braintree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. That's, that's Facebook even before, you know. <laughs> and I don't know if, it was, if people were being serious, but I think <laughs> some of them were. So could you give us a little rundown on what Freeport is then, pal? Freeport is a status, um, and it's in many towns... Uh, well, port towns, basically. I think there's a couple of inland hubs as well, where it's basically about the tax, the duty, and the tariffs. So when stuff comes in, you pay less duty, and there's different kind of rates going to be agreed. And I don't think they've finally been agreed yet. Mm. But what it also means, if you're going to build something for the infrastructure around Freeport, like build a new warehouse or you know convert some land over, you're not going to have to pay the same... Uh, taxes and you're going to get a bit of rebates and I think when it was first announced it was even said that any new employees taken on PAYE would pay less national insurance themselves and we're also going to be a hydrogen hub with Sizewell just up the road they're going to run hydrogen into the area to propel things and run things that's a long way off but it is actually only for five years Right, but of course, all that investment comes in. People build warehouses. That infrastructure will be left behind. But on the negative side, there's the environment in, environmental impact of all the extra traffic, and some people might use it in a fraudulent way to say they are operating out of a free port to benefit from the taxes. Right, so, and there's more than that, but that's a loose kind of. So definition. the man on the street is it a benefit to the man on the street? So if the man on the street fixes fork trucks, yeah, there'll be more fork trucks. If the man on the street sign writes vehicles, yeah, it'd be busier. And therefore, when the sign writer and the fork truck driver in town, they might go up town and get their lunch. They might even buy something in the shop. So, yes, of course it will have benefit, unless it's the negative impacts I spoke about that come with it. So, just made this up on the spot. We're talking about something. We're going to give it a Verzo and Procky five-star rating, between obviously between one and five. What do you think, straight off the bat, what rating do you think a free port would reach? In your head, do you think it's a five star or four, three? I in, think in terms of goodness for the town, mm, I think it's two, two and a half. Yeah, because it's not going to have a massive impact. We all got excited about it when it was released, but yes, it will have a positive impact just because there's going to be more infrastructure put in. So there might be stuff coming into the country, trans shipped to trailers or containers, and then taken out again. Yes. So there won't be more general labour jobs going. If you can find the space to operate. And what, what time frame have we got for this? Well, it's been, they it was supposed to be December. I think more of it's in January now. I actually went to a presentation about it um, three or four weeks ago over at CopDoc. 
Uh, that and battery technology and fork trucks, Verzo. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's coming. But then again, there's warehouses already being built up near Stowe Market based around the infrastructure that's coming or the, the extra work that's coming. So it could, it could potentially bring new jobs to the town. It will. And for me, that's a positive. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more security for the town. Yeah, the more people earning, the more people spending, yep. the independent shops, restaurants, etc., stay yep. open, win-win. It's about the legacy in five or ten years' time that could have a risk. Yeah. But it should be positive, yeah. Cool. Of course. That's, that's fan- fantastic, because even though I work on the Port of Felix, though, for a, an independent company, I don't work for the Port of Felix, though, I haven't really paid a great deal of attention to what a free port is, so I've actually done something today as well. There you go. Yes. So, um, what, what other things shall we bring to the podcast? Um, not necessarily today, but throughout the series. I don't know, I think that if we, we're going to have a journey, we're going to put this out. <clears throat> if anyone wants to comment on stuff, we'll say we're right, say we're wrong, say what they want to hear of, or anything that's, you know, getting in the middle. I mean, obviously, we have to be careful about what we say about people, only you positive. Yeah. I don't want to get a paste in walking along the front on a Sunday. <laughs> it's, um, the, the pasting, um, I'm not overly upset about because you know me, I've, I've had one or two over You've the had years. a couple of it's, it's, um, it's getting a letter through the door, taking me to court. Do you mean the naughty bus again? <laughs> oh, yes. So uh, Let's not forget that, the naughty bus, that's, though. That's long gone. I'm, I'm a 51 year old <laughs> adult now who um, is responsible, so there'll be. Um, Can we talk about the naughty bus? Um, not today. <laughs> Another day, I think. I think we'll talk about that another what day. What about the inner thigh? Oh, the inner thigh. We can talk about that one day? Well, yeah. We can explore that. We can explore the inner thigh. and um, that Your was... website that got shut down by the Americans, wasn't it? Um, yes, by yeah. the FBI. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, that was, that's, that's a story to come. So, being investigated by the FBI, um, they apologised and said I'd done nothing wrong, but... Yeah, it's a bit late then. A bit late. Um, yeah, there's, some, there's lots of stories. and um, I will say that driving here, I was thinking about what we're going to talk about, and I just thought of Felix Doe Legends. Yeah. And I'd like to nominate who I think is the ultimate. Chris Dunnett. Yeah. Without doubt, the true definition of a word legend, Chris Dunnett. Yeah, because he, um, he was everybody's friend in a way. Yeah. He could do things that you couldn't believe could be done like you'd, there'd be a container in the wrong place and he'd just go and speak to the right person they'd go yeah don't worry about it I, I'm going to say one thing negative about Chris what's that it cost my football club £100 and got thrown out of the cup <laughs> because we, we played this team and, and we beat them 2 or 3 nil. and um, Chris was signing off for us and, but his signing hadn't come through right so he's in goal and he's playing, um, his sign and on came through on the Monday, he played in goal for us on the Sunday. And so uh, he played all right, you know, kept a clean sheet, we won. And then in the bar afterwards, how long you, you know, when the other team said, how long have you been with, with them, Chris? <laughs> oh, I'm just helping them out today. <laughs> Cheers, Chris, they put a complaint in. Did they they? Then, yeah, they then won the game and we got chucked down. <laughs> I heard he used to play in goal with Buster sitting beside him. He used to have a pint, a lot of pint of oh, cider in his hand. He, he was fantastic. There was there was one little story I'm going to tell. He, um, do you remember the the feathers? Yeah. Feathers pub, ah, place that you talk about legends. I think there's buildings of legend, yeah. legend buildings that might. Down be the there. Falcon. Yeah. Um, well, when United used to go in there after after the games, and um, we'd go in there drinking and um, all fundraising stuff. And one day, uh, there was a game of pub golf to raise money. Right. Where um, uh, teams were drawn at random. Yeah. It was me, Steve Sayers, and Chris Dunnett were drawn. And we'd actually won before we'd left the, fol- uh, the feathers. Because um, it was like a point per half or something like that. I think before we'd actually got to leave, Chris had done eight pints and four shots. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. Did you know, because you don't drive... There's a truck running round with Dunnett Haulage on the front. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, so his um, funeral mm. up at the crematorium, he was brought in on the back of an LPS truck, which was the truck he used. Yeah, I, I knew and, that, but I didn't yeah, know it named. Yeah, they sign wrote it. Oh, fantastic. Dunnett Haulage, and obviously, you know, the lads brought him in, uh, and it's still doing runs, I think it's on like local jobs, with Dunnett Haulage on the front. So LPS have 
set it aside and said that his name's on the front, which is lovely. That is, that is, that is a nice touch. Yeah. yeah. I think what I'll have to do for the next episode, this is, um, this is something that's just growing as we're talking. I'll pick somebody. Then after three or four, we can put them out to the um, yeah. public. Yeah, who is the legend? Fun. Yeah. <laughs> but no, definitely um, it's going to have to come up with somebody amazing. Uh, top to Chris, be, I think. He, years ago, when uh, the dock was more paper-based, he would take his truck onto the dock, put it on location and leave it, then Will Goodwin would come round in the blue Ford Sierra, pick him up, go back to the yard, get another truck, <laughs> run that round and put it on location. And there's Will driving round on the dock with no whirly light. Go back to the first truck, because it had been done. They all knew it was Chris's truck. And then um, he'd go and park that up and go back for the second one. He's so, actually doing two shunts at once. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I can imagine. Uh, that's superb. But what we're doing now, Paul, we was just going to take um, a short break and then we'll come back and... Talk some more. Excellent. Here we go again, then, Prop. Let's get going again. Um, one thing I've always been asked, been wanting to ask you, and we're going to get it on record. People are going to hear me ask you this. Tell me about the Trimley Treble Mines. <laughs> uh, I can't. Why not? It's a secret. Yeah, but no one's listening. Just me. <laughs> Well, can't, we can't. If Nick Nudge found out, found out I'll be... Well, in actual fact... Oh, see, it's too risky. Trimley Treble Mines is... The entrance isn't known. Mm. Okay. Um, I can say that it is and was kind of loosely around the mining of bauxite many years ago. I think just after the war. But the empty mine yeah. was there... And, yeah. See, coming from Felix, though, um, when he was a kid, especially if my bike was broken, I had no money for the bus, a trip into Trimley was, was, a, was a trek. Well, yeah. So, um, we often talked about going to find out there where the Trimley Treble Mines and do a little bit of a famous five thing, mm. but I never had a dog. So, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> a bit daft, so, isn't it? Yeah, so we never did. Yeah. But I'll find out one day. Yeah, it won't be from me. No? Because um, I can't even say much more than that, really. Trimmy Jacob Mines is trim. I, I, if there was... Okay, there is a risk with one person who's said to know. Oh, what's his name? Nick Nudge's dad. Um, Curtis. Mr Curtis. Yeah, rent a mourner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why he's called rent a mourner? Because he turns up and has Every, a... Everybody's funeral. Every funeral I've been to, for anyone who Felix though. Oh, there he is. Brilliant. <laughs> he even gets himself up seven hills. Well, maybe Nick will listen to this and... Um, he won't comment. He won't comment. No. I've done too much, to be fair. Nick, if you're listening, it's my fault. I'm, I'm, pe- I'm pressing him. I'll find out one day. Maybe you'll tell me. I doubt you will either. There's more than no, just me. I'm not the... the yeah. The, you know, the... Bastion or key holder of the treble mine, yeah. but we just don't talk Steve about it. Steve Biggs knows, doesn't he? Biggs, he's got a bit of a thing going on about it. Of course yeah. he would. He's a trimley boy. Trimley boy, the trimley boys. Butler, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a few. Stringer, he's moved away though. Vincent Stringer. Vin- oh, yeah, Vin- yeah, that's a name I haven't heard of. Ian long Stringer, time. his brother. Yeah. Yeah. Did he become a prison officer? Uh, Ian's a prison Ian, officer. Yeah. Stringer was uh, retail. Yeah. He moved away, actually. Many years ago, yeah. Yeah. So I won't be drawn on trimley treble mines. Okay, but that's just going to lead into something else on there. Nice little link there. Um, a little topic that we want to bring to the podcast is a where are they now? Okay. And um, it was you mentioned that the stringers actually made me rethink about that. People who used to live here years ago and now moved away. We can get them on Zoom. We can get them on yeah or whatever and have a little chat with them about what they're doing and what yeah. they're about Felix though. Yeah, definitely. Like Scungy, Justin. Yeah. He's uh he's moved away. Been living abroad backwards and forwards, so we yeah. can get him on. Do you know, uh, I don't know if he'd come on, but Stuart Ward, Wardy. He's out in New Zealand, isn't he? Yeah, he is doing very well. He's I'm very fr- happy. I'm friends with his brother, Jeremy. Yeah. Who uh, who lives in Basingstoke. Oh, very, uh, yeah. yeah, Basingstoke. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, we'll do that then. We'll get a few heads and see, uh, yeah, see who's Get a few ideas together and who we can give a talk to. Well, that's the power of Zoom, Jamie. It is. 
Yeah, it's so powerful. I've actually brought you around my house today. <laughs> well, I want to go chip shop. You did, yeah, yeah. Not to come and see me. You want to go and get some chips? Fantastic. Again, um, talking about the past, um, Felix has seen a lot of changes over the years. Old shops, bars, pubs, clubs. Yeah. Even even the schools have changed. Um, we, 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 you know. We, the kid, I feel sorry for the kids now because they can't have the who's better or well with Deben. Well, we, we know. know. Yeah, we, we know, know all well's better. We, we know it's all well. Yeah, of course. Shadow of a doubt. Yeah. And I've probably just alienated 48% so of the... So what have they done with Deben? Have they knocked it down? Yeah. They would do, wouldn't they? Yeah. Oh, they did all well first. They did, yeah. They knocked all well yeah, first. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Not all legends can live on forever. No. Um, so, of course, we'll have many all well, all well with Deben debates. We've had many before. Yeah. Um, I was going to invite a couple of deeper people around to talk about it, but they never turn up. They don't, do they? No. No, you've just only got to watch what's going on. I, I better whisper because the wife's from Deben and um, oh. she might come in and yeah. bash me. Yeah. You're with a demon now? I'm with a demon, mate, yeah. What are you doing? I remember Orwell and Deben, we were going to have, we all, yeah, it could be a scrap at lunchtime, but it never actually, well, it did once or twice. But coming over the hill near the railway station, yeah, yeah, or meeting over Harpers, over the park over there, yeah, yeah. I used to be the scout on a bike. Well, I got pulled into um, the headmaster's office, um, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. He yeah. was never in school, was he? No, he was. Um, oh, he was in court. He was, yeah, he was uh, Moonlight Money as a, as a JP. JP. In his red Sierra. Yes. Um, anyway, one day he was in school, and I got called in, and um, apparently I was the ringleader in a big fight between Orwell and Deben. And I'm like, I've no idea. He said, well, there was a massive brawl and you were seen walking towards Deben. I was actually going from the school to Woolworths because my mate Henry wanted to buy the Pet Shop Boy single. <laughs> and when we got to Woolworths... He's the wrong person to be a judge, really. Yeah, yeah he ain't no got to. But when we got to Woolworths, yeah. my mate went up to the counter and said, have you got the, the song that's in the charts by the Tuck Shop Boys rather than the Pet Shop Boys? What's he doing? Yeah, and all these years later, I, I remember... So we once were given a key to go and unlock a room, and he said, bring it back. But then it was lunchtime, and I forgot. So just before we left, I went, oh, I've got the key. So <laughs> I whipped down underwards, had one copied, and it was the key for the woodwork rooms, yeah. but also the toilets and change rooms down near the gym end. So we just used to lock ourselves in rooms and do what we wanted for a little while, and then lock ourselves out again. Yeah, you probably, probably learn more, to be honest. Yeah. I went for a dyslexia test. See if I've got dyslexia. First woman, she was mad as a bag of frogs. She said, you've got dyslexia. I went, ah, oh, okay, that answers a few things. Then I went to the <coughs> dyslexia shop in Ipswich a couple of years later, because other people said, I don't think you are. And I went in and did this test, and it was more on a computer, and there was an assessor with me, and he did a report on me, and part of his report said, you were probably let down by your high school. Had you have had a better high school, you'd have probably gone on to do a degree or something. Mm. Not right, is it really? Not really. I mean, but Orwell is still better. Oh yeah, we um, we must reiterate that both Orwell and Deben in the eighties were poor, <laughs> but Deben was poorer. Yeah, okay. I think we should have a break. Yeah, I think we should. I just we'll just leave it there. Just and leave it there. Break. Play a little bit of incidental music. Oh, and then. Another nice little break here we had, Proggy. Um, just to move on a bit, what are you up to nowadays? Uh, work or home? Both, really, if you want. Okay, so uh, I was in Tattingstone for about six years. You can't buy anywhere in Tattingstone. No. no so um, we bought a place in Capel, a little bit too close to the chip shop. No, <laughs> not the chip shop, the, uh, the Indian oh, and right. the Chinese and the co-op, about four quid for a loaf of bread. Yeah. But because I live in Tattingstone, we're quite good at uh, doing the weekly shop once a week, Jamie. Yeah. Well, once a week's enough. But, um, yeah, I'm getting old now. But I've got a little five-year-old, little Harry. He's as good as gold. Mandy's just awesome. We're um, just trying to do the kitchen at the moment. She's at home at the moment painting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm back on tomorrow night with uh, starting to put the underfloor heating down. So, yeah, it's good. Um, and as far as work, I did uh, two years as night supervisor at LPS. Uh, that was pretty intense all night really but in the morning no one really kind of appreciated what I'd done yeah and I pulled some stunts like two o'clock in the morning got to get a box off in Southampton 
everywhere's closed. I ended up getting off at a railhead or something. You know, ring them up. What can we do? And everyone go, oh, right, we've got to go and pick that up then. But that's haulage, isn't it? It's such a big game. But it, while I enjoyed the challenge, I wasn't getting any reward, really. Right. Like, I think in the two years, I think <coughs> it was like, well done, probably three times. So um, I kind of just thought, oh, I can't. And I was, then a couple of things, you know, I just thought, I think I'm bored now, you know? So I had a noticing. And Maddie said, well, if you really need to, then you need to. So yeah. I did. Um, I think it was on the Monday. On the Wednesday, I emailed three people that I wanted to work for. And then I think the following Monday, he said, come in. And I'm now working, doing business development and a bit of operations for the Stannard family. So Carl Stannard, okay. Sean Stannard yeah. and Natalie Stannard. Yeah. And um, they've got the recruitment firm and then the warehousing business and they've got trucks and they do all kind of lovely stuff. Oh, and they're, they're growing. And the reason they're growing is because they're nice people, which is why that was one of the people I wanted to work for. Yeah. So I've got a brilliant job. I'm being, you know, appreciated and thanked all the time. And it's a nice little feel it's a family business, isn't it? Very much a true family business, yeah. yeah. The two boys just started off as handballers like 10 years ago. Mm. They've just done so well and grown so, you know, in a measured way. Yeah. You know, they, they do know what they're doing, definitely. Excellent. Yeah. Obviously, the success is Natalie looking after all the money. It's... <laughs> The success is always down to the, the, the females. Yeah, you need you need a bit of uh, a yeah. bit of sanity at the top, don't you? Yeah, a bit of reasoning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's really good. Yeah, I'm very fortunate. Good. And uh, still doing the. Well, I just got back to doing the first responding. So I um, had uh, I did it for four years. Then when Harry was going to be born, I had to come off. Mm. Then he got back two and a half. I went to go back on in the October, November. The ambulance service aren't that great at moving that along. It was January, February, COVID. Yeah. So then COVID happened. Um, and then I was going to go back about 12 weeks ago. But with the driver shortage, I had to go and get in a lorry for eight weeks. Just going to ask you, for people who don't know who are listening, what is the role of a first responder? Okay, so in a rural community where it can take longer for the ambulance to arrive, mm. a community first responder is on duty and you can pick when you want to go on and off and you get a call or a text uh, when there's something happening in your area and they dispatch you in advance of the ambulance. Sometimes you get there at the same time and then you're backed up and if a responder is sent, it does not change the other resource from the ambulance service. Right. So you're actually on the CAD, the system at Norwich, as a resource, and then they send you, and we go in with, obviously a defibrillator, oxygen, we, do, we can now do blood pressure and temperature and all that, and get people ready for the off. Um, and I think now we can actually um, do some extra training, and maybe the ambulance didn't need to come and see them. So, yeah, but that's normally the community setting, but Felix, though, I've got a really good group, a really okay. active group, yeah, very much. Um, that called Jacobs as part of it as well. Um, you sort of see them on Twitter. Right. But it's not just the volunteers that are doing it that has the uh, the thing that happens. Obviously, Mandy, you know, I might run off and be gone for a couple of hours, got to do training, and then there's volunteers that volunteer to run the volunteers, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And today, Nick Williams gave four hours of his time for five of us to go to Martlesham Ambulance Service and do all of our ECGs and hearts and the mechanics and how it all stitches together and, you know, you know what you need to do that way, which we don't actually do as CFRs, but it's still interesting to learn. Well, well it's nice when, when people like Nick can give their time to, yeah. to help out. Yeah, he's very passionate about ECGs. Yeah. A little bit weird, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, there's, there's lots of people that make it all happen. So And the fundraisers as well. So, like, the Rotary and the Lions and that, they all give money to them yeah. to get the kits together. Excellent. Yeah. And I obviously get a lot out of it too. Sometimes a little bit of self fulfilment is goes a long way, doesn't it? Yeah. For, for your own well being, really. And I like being the centre of attention when you walk in. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that one, Prop. <laughs> All right. Just before we move on to the next bit, I need to ask you the same question I ask everyone I have on a podcast. Um, you'll only get asked this once. What's your favourite song? Uh, Sylvia's mother 
Or Doctor Who. Fantastic choice. Yeah? Yeah. yeah just, it's a good one to belt out, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, perfect choice. I, I don't know where it came from or how I got to hear it, but yeah, a lot of the Doctor Who stuff I like. Yeah, from the 70s, it's something that your parents were had on, I suppose, and you just sub- subconsciously get it into your head. Yeah, don't I, you? I, I don't think it was, I think it was after then. I just was heard that? it. I heard Doctor Who for some reason. Uh, and yeah, got into it. Uh, What's yours? Oh, um, the Eagle, the Eagles um, Hotel California. Oh. That's, um, it's my favourite song, and... I'm not even going to open up to discuss with anyone because they're all wrong. <laughs> it's the greatest song ever written. I was once in a bit of a pickle around someone's house and it was very late at night and that song was on but it was like a half tempo version. Right. So it was played slower and it was, that weren't because I was in a pickle, it was actually happening. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a lovely song. Funny enough, um, I've probably played that song more when I'm in a pickle than I am sober. Okay. But it's still... It's one of those songs that I, I think you need to have been with Ale to, to find. And then once you've found it, it's there forever. And it is, it's just spot on. Okay. Pub song is Bye Bye Miss American Pie. Yeah, Don McLean. Yeah, what was the one that everybody used to sing in the Felix on the jukebox? Daydream Believer yeah, the and the, yeah. the whole pub would sing yeah, that. When that went on, it used to, it used to be a, a pie master. See... The Felix. The, them days in the Felix, it was the best pub in Felix then. Closely while, up there with while. the Falcon. Yeah. Well, I mean, for seafront pubs, oh, it, God, it yeah. was, you know, it was it was spot on. It was, everyone got in there and everyone mixed and everyone had a good time. Yeah, it was, yeah. You had different areas, didn't you, at the top yeah. and the bottom. What was the name of the, there was a Scottish fellow behind the bar for a while called Kevin. Yes. And wasn't the landlord called Monty or something? Yes, he was. Monty. Yeah, the landlord was called Monty with black hair. Oh, you're going back several years now. Definitely, probably when I was 17. I, th- I think the last time that was used as a as a big drinking place was um, during the European Championships of 1996. Oh. But that story is for another podcast. <laughs> Good on you. Yes. Take a break. <laughs> we'll have a little break there before we wind things up, probably. Lovely. So mate, we're on, on to the last little bit. Um, how do you think it's gone today? Uh, I've enjoyed it. Um, I think the the, uh, the room here you've got is lovely. I can see you're very organised with your 2022 year planner with your uh, coloured little blocks there. It's nice. That is actually the wife's. She's hijacked my room and put that up in my... This is my room, this is my office. Where's hers? Um, everywhere else in the house. That's not very fair, is it really? I I'm think, mean, I think no. you've been a bit greedy myself. Yeah. There's no so, fridge. Um, there, there was a fridge in my office when it was upstairs, but I've not brought it down yet. Okay. So we've only sort of recently changed things, so right. the fridge is still to come down. Okay, so that's the, good. The fridge will yeah. make an appearance. Lovely. So, um, what are we going to do? How are we going to progress this? Well, I've, I've enjoyed what we, how we've set it out where we're just chatting about Felix Doe, the people of Felix Doe. Um, we've got one or two ideas that we've already mentioned, but I still want to interview people like I've done in previous podcasts. I think you should go out and about, or we should go out and about, and, and try and get people to, uh, to to say their bit. Yeah. And promote Felix, though. Yeah. We can, we, little, little road, we can do a little road from reporting bit, can't we? <laughs> we can. Yeah. We can go. We, we can have a little wander around Underwoods and have a word with the boys in there. We can, yeah. <laughs> we go and get a sausage from up the road. Let's get a nice little sausage roll <laughs> on Saturday morning. What's that place called that does the awesome sausage rolls? That's the... The bakery opposite Dean Butcher's, isn't it? Yes, next to the pet shop. Yeah. Very rarely, one of us will go, sausage roll! And <laughs> someone has to go up there. Yeah. I think they're about two quid each or something. But they are banging sausage rolls. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah we can do that. I think there's a bit of a theme around food here, isn't there? Yeah, we'll have to do it on one of my cheat days. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. But it seems it might develop with quite a lot of cheat days if I'm uh, getting involved with you, mate. You, you make Not me... my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, there's there's a lot of people do a lot of good things in Felixstowe, and um, are you going to be mayor of Felixstowe one day? Um, I don't know. So that wasn't a no. It's not a no. No. Um, I'd, I'd obviously have to do my stint on the council, get involved in the council. Is that how you do it? I don't know how yeah. these things work. Yeah, un- un- unfortunately... It, you don't go on very well with that, do you? It's, it's not a public vote like the, you know, like the X fact. I, I think <laughs> I'd walk it. <laughs> don't be too big, mate. No, I, I said that with um, tongue firmly in cheek. No, because um, 
the the way it, the way it operates, you have to get on and do your stint, right, and do a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't have the time at the moment, and possibly the temperament. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, we've not forgotten the naughty bus episode. No, we haven't. But we'll talk no. about that another time. Okay. That was that was in the past. Yeah, but that's long um, gone. But no, um, yeah, um, we could get we could get a bit of thing going on, even if it's just not just for entertainment. But I really want to see Felix do do well. I know we're not BBC Radio Suffolk, but we'll have fun doing it. Of course, yeah. I mean, there there, there is people in town who um, who champion Felix though, and one of them is um, is the guy on Felix No Radio who we are going to chat to soon. Cool, Rob Dunger. Yes, he's um, he, he does some he does some good stuff on the radio. Yeah. If um, if, if anyone gets a chance to listen to Felix No Radio, listen when Rob's on because he does support the town well. Did you ever hear about everyday people? No. The council list. I'll tell you about that another day. Okay. That, I think that might that might make an appearance in episode yeah, two. That could do, yeah. Yeah. Let's just say Steve Bloomfield weren't very happy. Ah. All right. We'll leave it there. Okay, we'll leave it there. Nice, nice little teaser for the next episode. <laughs> that one. So. Um, Excellent. Unless there's anything else you'd like to ask me before we go. No. Um. I think I'm good to go. I think I'll be able to find my way home. Yeah. Uh, it's dark. Uh. But I'm fine. Thank you. Fantastic. So, um, cheers for coming on board, Pog, and let's hope that there's many more to come. Good on you, mate. Right then, folks, that was um, the first episode of the new series of the podcast with um, Proggy as my co-host. Um, if you want to join us in, on social media, pop along to Facebook and put in Verzo's Procast. P R O C K space C A S T and look for the group. Join that group and get involved there. And there's also the Twitter using the same tag there, Verzo's Procast. Or you can pop along to my website, jvtv.co.uk forward slash podcast. And then we'll hopefully see you back here in two weeks. See ya. Before we go, Pocky's playing the mouth organ. Cheers. Bye.